Hello and welcome to everyone. Welcome to my first YouTube video of 2021. This is officially my first actual video for the YouTube. <laughs> I just said the YouTube like a real old person. Um, but yeah, so every other video that I've had or put onto YouTube so far has been from IGTV. So I've literally fully committed. I bought myself an actual blogger camera and a tripod and yeah this is me i'm not gonna lie i was excited to do this video but then also really really nervous because it's like a full commitment when you're like i'm gonna do youtube videos and you know this is gonna be my first one and if you're a bit of a perfectionist like myself i do sometimes put a little bit of added pressure onto myself which is really not necessary but yeah welcome to everyone and thank you for watching my video um today i'm just talking a bit about my blog post that i put up this week about lockdown 3.0 and the things that you can do to help yourself during this lockdown. But this lockdown, for me anyways, and I think amongst my family and friends, has been so much more harder than any other lockdown that we've done. I think we're all there with lockdown 1.0 and it was kind of like, it's, it was a novelty, it was new, you know, stay at home. Um, some of us were working at home, which was a real novelty and actually felt quite special because it's something that we've always wanted to do. Some of us sadly weren't working, but at the same time, it was sunny in the UK. You know, we're having drinks, drinks in the garden or going for a walk and having drinks in your, in your local park and whatnot. But this lockdown is tough. We're in the winter seasons. It is miserable. It is, you know, UK weather is doing its best to show us what the UK weather does, which is rain, you know, rain in Spain and all that malarkey, it has rained nonstop and it is very gray and gets dark incredibly early. So I think right now, doing, enforcing these tips is more important than ever. And I have to say, starting 2021, I had hope, I had hope that we were gonna turn a corner and COVID, our COVID experience was only gonna get better. And I think once we started, and the government said, actually, this could go on till February, a nationwide lockdown, and then potentially April. And, and actually, you know, summer's a little bit shaky as well. I think mentally that took uh, its toll on everyone, and especially myself. And I, I, I pride myself as trying to be as, you know, positive and progressive as possible with my mindset, but it, it was tough. And hence why I'm kind of doing a video that I would have loved to have done at the start of lockdown, but currently in the middle of it. Um, and I think I kind of neglected some of the things that I had done in the previous lockdown, which were really important. So, yeah, you will find out I can talk forever. So I'm going to be good and try and curtail how, I'm, how much I'm talking. But essentially, I've got 10 tips I want to share with you guys. I popped it in a blog. I'll put the uh, link to the blog down below in the comments. But I just want to talk about it a little bit further as it's easier to get my point across and, you know, get to know me a little bit better. So tip number one, my first tip is to stop watching the news. Now I know that that might be a controversial tip to some people, like for example, stop watching the news, how ignorant, how are you gonna be kept up to date with current affairs and national affairs? And the real truth of it is, is that I am a person that used to watch the news and regularly intake the news before the whole COVID situation. But after a week of watching every single PM address, I just felt completely overwhelmed. And this tip is all about protecting your own mental health and your general mindset. Now, I was there with the rest of the nation through week one, watching the UK Prime Minister's address every single day. And at first, I found it really comforting. I felt like we were collectively all in this together. I remember speaking with my friends after watching the address. However, by week one, I was just done with it. I was completely overwhelmed with the feelings of uncertainty and negativity. And because of the news, and in general, the news is relatively negative. It's a shame we don't have any news which is just full of positivity. However, in general, I just felt overwhelmed and it was an onslaught of negativity. So for my own mental health, I decided to stop watching the news. Now, I didn't completely shut my eyes to, to the current affairs within the UK and globally. However, what I chose to do was to use my phone. I think there was a really helpful um, notification on my Apple phone and this is not a plug for Apple, but it was the BBC News top five stories for the day and that would get delivered every every day around eight o'clock to nine o'clock and it would give me a quick high overview of the top five stories. Now I understand that those stories are very much curated by BBC News and you know there is the theory about how you get your news, are you being led by a particular news channel? However for me 
With that choice, it meant that I could quickly get the five top stories. If I did take an interest to any of them or did want to get further information, I could click on further. And if I did do that, I would make a conscious decision that I would limit my news intake for a day for 15 minutes. So I'd either look at the quick overview or spend 15 minutes delving further into some of the articles and then I would call it a day in order to protect my mental health. My next tip, tip number two, is create a loose routine. And yes, that might sound a little bit odd to create a routine that is loose because isn't the idea of a routine for it to be incredibly structured so you go from one thing to the next. And yes, in a normal circumstances, a normal reality, that is how I would shape my routine. However, we need to be kind to ourselves in this current climate. And I think that the whole, whole emphasis of creating a routine is to provide you with purpose and intention for your weekdays, Monday to Friday. However, I think it's important to leave it pretty loose so that you have that element of flexibility. It can go with how your day develops, how you feel, the news or anything that changes in our in our current circumstances and ultimately if you don't stick to the routine a hundred percent you don't feel like you have failed and feel like you're constantly chasing your tail and I think that is something that provides you a bit of comfort when it comes to designing your actual routine it is going to be very up to, to personal circumstances and how you feel and what is in your day and I think that is the key really is design a routine that literally works for you and you only you and your family and that's it because depending on our circumstances and what we have to do in our day whether that be we're currently not in work or we are in work or we are in work as well as homeschooling or homeschooling itself, it's going to be very different. And how you cater to yourself and your routine is going to be dependent on that. And tip three is a tip that kind of just flows on from tip two, which is about your morning routine. I recently read a statement which really sat with me. It's something that I really resonated with. And it was basically this saying, how you start your morning sets the tone for the rest of your day. And when I heard it, I couldn't actually believe it because it's something that I have been working on since 2020, which is my overall morning routine. But I listened to it and it really resonated because I'll say it again so you can hear it and really think about the words, but essentially it says, how you start your morning sets the tone for the rest of your day. And ultimately what that means is if you start your morning in a with a negative thought process or you've snoozed your alarm clock 110 times before starting work. And let's face it, we've all been there. I know I have. But ultimately, if you are starting your day off like that, you're already on the back foot and you're already battling against your feelings already going into the start of your working day. However, if you start your day not hitting smooth snooze, waking up, thinking about whatever you're grateful for first, maybe doing a 10, 15 minute workout just to get those feel good chemicals around, a little bit of a meditation session or coffee and read your book or whatever your fancy may be, then you're already starting your morning with a slightly better tone and you're making it ultimately a little easier for you to transition throughout the rest of your day. Obviously it means if you start your morning bad, it doesn't necessarily mean that the rest of your day is doomed. However, if you start your morning with a good morning routine, then it just makes it a little easier for you to conquer the rest of your day. Tip four, exercise. Now this is something which is a hot topic for me because I went through certain periods of my life absolutely loving exercise and then in my 20s, not so much until I started do, doing it purely more on a mental basis rather than a physical. And it's an interesting topic really because I think we generally are uh, trained or we are in society look at exercise as a thing to give you a better physicality but I generally found out that towards the end of my 20s that I found that exercise actually made me feel mentally better than I than physical and that for me outweighs the physical benefits with exercise, I think the key thing to know is it's not about doing those long, long slogs of exercise, those hour workouts. And trust me, I still sometimes do them. But what I find is if I continuously do hour workouts, I generally just feel disengaged from working out. I wake up and I don't want to work out. So the thing that for me is most important is consistency. And I think consistency as a terminology in anything you, you do is, is the thing that you should strive for always. And ultimately, to be consistent with exercise, working out three to four times a week, the only way that I can really achieve that is doing shorter sets of workouts that I genuinely look forward to. 
During the last lockdown, I did a seven minute workout. It's an app that I downloaded on my, on my iPhone. And once again, not a plug for Apple, but it was basically a quick app where you literally worked out for seven minutes intensively, and that was it for your day. And I have to say, whenever I'm not feeling like I'm up to working out, I will put the seven minute app on. And what it does is it gets your heart rate pumping, the blood pumping around your body, and it actually releases all of those real feel good um, chemicals into your brain, into your body, and you feel better because you've actually achieved something. So what I would say is make sure that you do do exercise. And I don't mean necessarily just your, your, your one once a day walk, but like seven minutes or 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes is a good, good aim of, of exercise and aim to do it three to four times a week consistently. And then you'll be able to keep it up and trust me, watch the mental benefits. So think about exercise is all about your mental health rather than exercising for a particular size or a bikini and so forth. Tip five is set yourself small obtainable goals. Like the morning routine, this is all about giving yourself intention and purpose throughout your week. These lockdown weeks can seem long windy with not much going on. And I think if you set yourself goals within your weeks, then it gives you a further purpose and intention for the week. These small obtainable goals shouldn't be the normal kind of things that you have to do in your week. For example, if you go to work and you have to go to work, that shouldn't be your goal. If you're homeschooling, then th those shouldn't be your goal, but they should be something that's personal to you. So for example, maybe your goal is that you want to be able to sit down for three times in that week and just have a coffee and read a book and make sure that you do those self-care times for you. Maybe it is that you want to work out three times for that week, Whatever they may be, it's all about just setting yourself something to give you purpose for your week. And the other key thing is to make sure that they're actually obtainable. We were all, we've all been through it where we heard about people, you know, learning new languages, new skills, and that is fantastic. But the key thing here is to make sure whatever goal you set is obtainable because you're trying to give yourself feel good factors. And if you are setting yourself a really large goal, which ultimately is very hard to achieve in, in that week. Well, when you don't achieve it, you're gonna feel like you failed and therefore not feeling great. And the key thing about these tips is to make you feel good for a very difficult time. Tip six is find yourself non-screen activities. Now, I know, me, myself, during lockdown one, I hit every TV series I could watch on Netflix and Amazon and to the point where I think I've completely exhausted a library. I now have nothing to watch. So if you do have anything that's really good to watch and is relatively new, please just pop it in the comments because I need new television series. But that being said, what I think is important is just not to be so focused on our screens, especially when you're bored. It's so easy just to pick up your phone and keep scrolling through social media. Yes, I do like social media, but I don't like to consume too much of it. My working day is in front of two screens, a laptop screen, I have a, a, a personal phone, I have a work phone, and ultimately it's too much screen usage in my day. So much so that I've actually invested in these glasses, which are blue light glasses to help with the eye strain. Oh my God, I actually look like my mum when I wear these. But yeah, so ultimately find yourself or write yourself a, li a list of activities that you could do. They can be anything from painting, colouring in, jigsaws. I'm not too good with your jigsaws, I have to say, and it makes me feel quite anxious because my partner will be just plugging away and I've literally just done one whilst he's put 10 pieces in. Um, but yeah, you could be reading, whatever they can be. But just I think if you write yourself a list, make sure that at the weekend, that you're not just consuming loads of screens, that you might do one or two of those activities, then I think you will feel the benefit for it. It's like taking yourself back to basics. And tip number seven is all about becoming one with yourself and nature. Now, I have been into meditation since the start of 2020, and there have been periods where I've not meditated and then started back up again, and I really did start back up again in September, and I genuinely do feel the benefit of it. It's, there's something to be said about taking a time just to sit down outside of your thoughts, so not in your thoughts, and just breathing really slow and just calming everything down and stopping your brain from racing, which is something that I suffer with quite a lot. And I think 
often when I think of meditation, I think of someone sitting for hours and hours. But truth be told is I never do a meditation session for longer than 10 minutes. I often do it in the morning, but there are meditation sessions which are actually a lot shorter. So you can do sessions from three to five minutes. They can be found on YouTube. I even think that you can find them on Spotify now, or you can sign up to an app. I signed up to the Calm app and it's fantastic. But I honestly recommend trying to incorporate three to five minutes of meditation every day just to give yourself the best chance of feeling good um, at the start of your morning. In addition, maybe, maybe you've tried meditation and it's not good for you or you're just not into it or you can't see yourself as, as a meditator and thinking about being one with nature. If you can go for a long walk and breathe slowly, take in the fresh air, look around you, be inspired by how, actually I'm looking outside at the trees now, but be inspired by how nature just continues to keep on turning regardless of the challenges it faces throughout all of the seasons and allow yourself just to feel one with that and remind yourself that you too are an animal amongst nature and think about how you can override and overcome challenges yourself and you know, continue through this lockdown and feeling better. Tip eight is a personal favorite of mine, is writing a gratitude journal. Now, once again, I think sometimes, like tip seven of meditation, is writing a gratitude journal, to think, you think, oh, it's just gonna take too long a day, I don't have time. Well, honestly, writing yourself a gratitude list can be one, writing in the journal, or writing in the notes section of your phone, or just literally saying it to yourself mentally. I think it's really important these current times when you are feeling low or overwhelmed with negativity is to really think and look around you to see what you could be grateful for. Because honestly, there is always something to be grateful for. I often do it in my morning after meditation, but sometimes if I'm not going to sit and do that, what I do is as I get out of bed, first thing in the morning, I put my feet on the ground, I think about three things that I'm grateful and I'll say it to myself and they can be as basic as, as I am grateful that I have got up today, that I'm here on this earth for another day or I'm grateful for the feet which are going to get me up, carry me to the toilet and throughout all the walks and whatever else for the rest of the day. But honestly, I think if you incorporate this, your perspective will change and if you're waking up feeling negative, your entire perspective will change for the day. And tip nine, I know I said tip eight was a personal favourite of mine, but tip nine really is a favourite of mine. And that is all about buying yourself small weekly gifts. Yep, that's right. I said it. Buy yourself some gifts. <laughs> they don't have to be huge. Or if you can afford to have huge ones, then go ahead. But when I say small weekly gifts, these can be simple things like, for example, flowers. I love to buy myself flowers, especially during this period of the season in the UK is bringing some nature inside your house or you know buying yourself your favorite candle to light up at the end of your day or a new bubble bath so when you finish your working day or finish your day or weekend you can sit in the bath or your new bubble bath whatever they are but the key thing here is you're buying something that is small and that you are going to look forward to doing at the end of your day or in your weekend. And the final tip for today is to be aware of how you talk to yourself. Now, this one is a, is a tip that I think should not be just present during lockdown, but throughout your whole adult life. And I say adult life because it's something that I think we all struggle with. I think we struggle, struggle with it in our child life, but I think it really becomes prevalent in our adult life. And sometimes we just really are too hard on ourselves and talk to ourselves not in the best way. So this is all about just being really mindful about those internal conversations that you have with yourself and thinking about, instead of saying something negative, flipping it for the positive and encouraging yourself and giving yourself some self-care and self-love. But in addition to that, it's not just about how you talk to yourself, it's about the conversations that you participate in. And during this time, I think it's really important to protect you and your mental health and your mindset. So if you often find yourself in conversations that often leave you feeling down or deflated or aren't inspiring, then I'm not saying close those doors completely to those conversations with those people, but maybe put them at a slight distance until you can feel mentally able and stable enough to consider those conversations. But honestly, this is something I have learned for many years and I'm still learning on. But, it, you know, it's so easy to find yourself wrapped up in negative conversations. But then you take a step back and then think about how you're talking to yourself and, and what kind of conversation you participate in. I think it's one of those constant challenges that you, you if you want to be aware of it, it's something that you kind of battle against often throughout your life. And I think it's a really good habit to learn. 
during lockdown and in your normal life. Well, anyways, that's my top 10. Thank you so much for spending the time with me. I have no idea for how long I've been chatting here, but you will probably find out is I love having a conversation and I am really looking forward to growing this community guide with you guys. If there are any tips that you've tried that haven't worked out for you, or there are additional tips that you really recommend, then please, please, please leave in the comments because I generally want to learn from others. I think the best people to learn from is others. And it's all about opening your mindset. But if you could hit like or subscribe and to see many more videos in the future, fingers crossed I continue and keep the confidence to go forward. But yeah, if you could hit like and subscribe, I'd really appreciate that and yeah, I look forward to speaking to you more in 2021. Have a lovely day.